What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Gimsor here. Today we are going to go over a guide. I'm going to try to help you guys get D3 running as smooth as possible and try to help out with any network issues you might have. So to start with this guide, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to launch D3. We're going to start simple and then uh, we'll kind of work our way up to the more uh, difficult things to do to increase uh, performance for Diablo 3. So let's go ahead and launch the game here. You're going to see a black screen for just a second. The game should be popping up any second. And while that's doing that, I'm going to take me a drink of water. <sighs> Good to stay hydrated. Keeps you healthy. All right, while this is loading up here. All right, so first thing you want to do, you can do this either from here in the menus or you can do it from in the game. So... For the sake of this guide, let's just uh, start the game here. Uh, bo most of this here that we're going to do right now is going to be pretty self-explanatory for most of you, and you've probably already done this. Um, but if you are having issues with low FPS and the game not running very well, go ahead and hit Escape. Let's go to Options here, and let's start with Video. All right, you can either run uh, full screen, windowed, windowed full screen. I prefer windowed full screen simply because I have multiple monitors, one over here, one over here, one up there, and that's it. <laughs> um, as far as that goes, um, I don't use V-Sync. I do not have reflections enabled simply because that's taking away processing power uh, from your GPU, which is your graphics card. I don't run any max foreground or max background uh, simply because... Uh, I, I have no need to enable them. Um, I do stream, or I'm sorry, I play with everything as low as possible or off. So texture quality here, low, shadows off, physics low, clutter density off, anti-aliasing off, and low effects enabled. If you uh, care about how your game looks, which I do not, uh, because simply on the basic lowest settings here, uh, to me it looks just fine. But if it doesn't to you, you're going to have to find a happy medium in here to uh, suit your needs. Uh, but for me, simply, I don't care if it looks 100%. Oh, my God. So these are the settings I run. Also, if you're like me and you don't care about sound, let's go ahead and turn all this off. So enable sound, make sure that's off. Enable music, make sure that's off. Um, if you do play with sound... Um, Back in the day, it used to be the, there were some issues with the sound channels, and putting on low or lowest would help with some FPS issues. I don't think that's as much the case anymore, um, but I can't tell you too much on that simply because I don't play with sound anymore. So another thing to keep in mind is your, uh, your social here. Um, I basically have everything turned off. I don't care when to find out when friends come online, go offline, when a friend broadcasts, anything like that. So I have all of this simply turned off. Uh, going down the line here, chat, doesn't really matter. Gameplay, uh, once again, this really doesn't matter. Back in the day, there used to be a lot of speculation about um, showing damage numbers and stuff like that, causing more processing power, thus taking away from FPS and stuff like that. I don't think that's the issue anymore or the case anymore, but uh, still you can see kind of my options here, what I run. Um, I do like to see the health bars of other players simply because a lot of times I'm running a heal monk. Uh, health bars, I like to see, you know, how much the monster's HP is left and player names. Uh, for my damage characters, I have my critical damage, uh, critical hit damage numbers on and show item labels on drop. Um, I only have this enabled simply because I only care about my crits. I don't care about regular damage numbers, uh, the whites, uh, text, and stuff like that. Um, as for that, that's going to be about it to do in-game. So let's go ahead and hop out of here. We're going to exit the game now, and we're going to go into the um, kind of second thing you can do here you're going to be without me for a second but we're going to go to desktop simply so you can see this um so you'd open your battle net uh what this is going to be is how to change back and forth from 64 bit to 32 bit um, basically if you're on an older machine that doesn't support DirectX 11 12 etc and uh you're on a 32 bit machine what you can do is change diablo 3 to run in 32 bit 
So what you do here is you go to Options, Game Settings. Well, it went away on me. Game Settings. And then you come over here. Uh, it's going to be the first one. Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. Launch 32-bit client instead of 64. So if you're on an older machine, you can try enabling the setting. Uh, it will launch 32-bit and play on 32-bit instead of 64-bit. Now then, um, next on the list, uh, we're going to get a little bit more technical here. But what we're going to do is you're going to search Windows and you're going to find d3prefs.txt. This is a text document and it will more than likely be in your documents. And there's a couple settings in here what you can do uh, that you can change to improve your gameplay and FPS. Uh, the first thing I like to do is come down to, do, 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 if I can find it here, hardware class. So Diablo 3 rates your computer on a scale of 1 to 6. 6 being, oh my god, you have a beastly computer. We're going to change some internal settings here and just crank out everything, make it the most graphically pleasing thing there is. 1 being, hey, this computer has very crappy components, so we're going to scale everything down. I run this on 1, even though I have a really good computer, uh, simply because I want to try to get it the most performance possible out of it. Uh, another thing you want to look for here is disable trilinear filtering. A uh, factory here, this is going to have a zero, which means it is enabled. It's going to, you're going to have trilinear filtering. Adding, taking away the zero and adding a one means you are going to disable this. Uh, on some older machines, this is going to help, and it's uh, basically less processing, less uh, graphics uh, processing going on. Uh, the next thing I like to do, um, this is more of a personal preference, more than it's going to increase things, but uh, you'll find in here, uh, if I can find it, where are you at, where are you at, where are you at, where are you at? Yep, let's do a little control F here. Of course, you're not going to find it. There we go. Nope, took me to the wrong place. But anyways, what you're looking for here is screen shake, disable screen shake. I feel kind of silly that I cannot find this. Oh, here we go, disable screen shake. So a lot of people, the, the longer they play D3, they don't even realize that this is an option or they don't even realize it's happening. So basically, uh, when you're playing through the game, uh, any attacks you do or monsters fighting you, et cetera, you have, your screen is shaking. Uh, and I've been asked several times how to turn this off. This is simply just a, a one or a zero. Uh, one disables it, and a zero in the parentheses, or the quotations here, uh, it's enabled. So I just swap this to one, which disables it. Next thing you want to do is make sure that your Diablo 3 is installed on an SSD if you have one. SSDs write faster and they read faster. So this makes loading in game significantly faster. And uh, yeah, pretty much all there is to it. So you go from longer loading screens to basically no loading screens, especially if you're on 64-bit client. Um, so if you do not have a six or an SSD, don't worry about it, don't stress it, but that's something you can keep in mind upgrade later down the road. Uh, next thing, next, drivers. This is very important. Uh, your main ones here, uh, so what you will do is you will come down to search windows again. You'll type in device or device manager. This is on Windows 10, of course. Uh, click device manager, and this is a, one of the easiest ways to upgrade or update your drivers. So what, first thing you want to start out here is display adapters. As you see here, GTX uh, 970, that's the card I'm currently running. I disabled my SLI because I was having issues. So what you can do is right click, update driver software, search automatically for updated driver software. This is going to assume you have an internet connection, which I don't know why you wouldn't, because of course you're watching this guide and you have an internet connection. So you click that, it's gonna search online, it's gonna say, hey, either you need to update or you have the most latest driver. Uh, next one you want to take a look into here is network adapters. Same thing here, right click, update driver software, search automatically. And once again, it's going to tell you if you're up to date or if not, it'll uh, give you uh, an option to update that. Um, these are the two most you want to keep a check on to make sure they're updated, but everything 
uh, it's always best to keep all your drivers on your PC updated regularly and keep a check on them to make sure they are updated. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go a little bit more in depth here on your network adapter. Um, keep in mind, this guide is assuming that you are on a wired connection uh, with an Ethernet cable. Uh, this will not apply to wireless, but if you are on a cabled connection from your router uh, with an Ethernet cable, what you're going to come down here to network adapters, and you're going to go to properties here. Then click on advanced, and what we're going to do is we're going to disable a lot of things in here. Um, a lot of uh, settings in here are basically taking and grouping and clumping your packets before it sends them out, rather than sending them, bringing them in and sending them out on a one-by-one -one basis, which you kind of want them uh, sent out on a one-by-one -one basis. That way, your inputs are getting sent out as soon as your um, as soon as your input is registered. So what we're going to do here is ARP offload disabled. Energy efficient Ethernet, it might be a little bit different for you um, if your driver is out, to, out of date. Uh, so some of these might look a little different, but sometimes it'll say green Ethernet or something along those lines. Make sure that's disabled because we are power users here. We do not care about being green. Flow control, same thing, disabled. Any checksum offload or anything offload, you want to make sure these are disabled. So large send, large send, all those are off. Uh, NS offload disabled. Uh, let's see, receive buffers, uh, leave that where it is on your computer. Receive side scaling, this is another one, disable that. Uh, let's see here, uh, we got more of our offloads on the TCP side, make sure all those are disabled. And wake on, magic packet, these don't really matter. Uh, you can leave those enabled. Um, also, keep in mind, any point in this guide, uh, make sure that you have your original settings. Just in case something you change doesn't work, you can revert back. It's kind of PC, uh, tinkering with your PC 101. Always make sure to back up, save, or uh, that way you can always go back to original settings if you need to. So, next thing is next. And what we I'm going to do here, since it would take a long time for me to go through this with you is to make sure you have, if you want to, a static IP set up on your computer, followed by opening the ports to your PC for the game. All this information can be found here. Uh, if you just open a browser, go to Google. Google. All right, we're here. That's kind of a stupid way to do that, but type in port forward. What you're going to want to do here is come to for portforward.com. This site is amazing. They have one of the most extensive lists of routers, um, modems, etc. to help you with setting up a static IP and port forwards. So what you're going to do here is you're going to go down to list of all routers. You're going to look up your brand. Uh, so just for whatever, we're going to say we have an Aris, for example. Then once you pick that, you're going to find your model number, which actually, uh, there's mine right here, SBG 6580. So what this will do is walk you through what you need to do, which first step here is going to tell you how to, or teach you how to set up a static IP address. Then it's going to teach you how to log into your router. And then as you come down, it's going to teach you how to set up port forwards. This basically enables the ports to make sure you're getting the least restrictive path back and forth from the Diablo servers. And as you can even see here, applications, you can come up to the top here. It's everything's in alphabetical order. And you can put in whichever you want. Let's see here. You have Diablo 3 here for uh, the just plain one here is going to be for PC. And basically, this is going to be what you set your static IP address to in your computer earlier in the steps. So say you set it as, uh, who knows, 15, for example. It's going to show you here, and this will be basically identical to what the settings look like in your, uh, in your router. So it's going to say, hey, since this is your static IP, put this address in here. Uh, it's going to have your protocol, everything, the settings here, this is what you need. So 8080, 
uh, you'll set the protocol to both and enabled on. So this will be the case for everything. Um, here will be your next setting, which is 1119 and 6120. So basically it's going to give you a list since you selected Diablo 3 of all the uh, the ports here that you need and it's going to walk you through this step by step. The next thing you can do here is come over back over here and go to Battle.net. Let's find it here. If I'm not completely blind. Which it's looking like I am. But anyways, you get the idea. You can come in here, select what you want. And even if Diablo 3 isn't the only game you play, say you play, let's see. Let's go down to a popular game here. Say you play World of Warcraft. You can come down here. Once again, you'll have your IP that you've selected for your static IP. And it will show you the same port, or show you the ports and what to put in step by step. Um, so that's it with that. And then to conclude this guide, remember here that um, all of this is basically uh, basically anything to do with your networking that we went over with device manager and having a static IP and port forwarding and all that stuff. The majority of it is going to be on wired connection. Wireless is, uh, I, I'm really not a fan of wireless. I feel as though there's too many issues that can go on. But if you don't have access to your modem or a router, you're going to need to find your network administrator. I don't know if you're going to be at a college campus or if you're younger and your parents have a lock on there. Uh, this is something you'll need to bring up to them. Other than that, guys, that's going to basically conclude this guide. Remember, please, 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 always, before you change anything, write down, take a screenshot, anything of your previous settings. That way, if there's any issues, you can always go back. All right. With that being said, this is Gimpsor, or I am Gimpsor, I think. If you like this video, if it helped you out, if it gave you even one FPS increase in game, please feel free to like this video, subscribe. I do stream daily on Twitch at twitch.tv slash And until next time, guys, I hope you have a great day and peace.